Welcome back to Proactive London, where I'm delighted to be joined in person by Glenn Brower. He is the sales director at Dry Lab and a very warm welcome to you, Glenn. How are you? I am very well, Thomas. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to have you on. It's obviously your Proactive debut, and we are going to be hearing a bit about the product, how it's coming along. It's obviously something that people have been keen to get an update about. But before we do that, could you just start by introducing yourself and telling us and tell us what it is that you bring to the Dry Lab party? Sure. So my name is Glenn Brower. I'm the sales director at uh, Dry Lab MediaTek. Um, I have uh, been working in media and entertainment since about 2012. Um, used to working with uh, studios, production companies, um, and then also large content aggregators, basically the people who make content, um, which is what we are after at Dry Lab, because Dry Lab is a onset uh, daily distribution tool. Um, which is used by production companies, studios, cinematographers, DITs, and then uh, uh, producers. All understood. So you've said there, onset daily distribution tool. Yep. For those people who aren't familiar with what one of those might be, perhaps yes. you can explain and, ex and uh, give us a sense of why it is that it's a product that you obviously personally believe in. Yeah. I think uh, onset daily distribution is unique. Um, we can do that without internet connectivity. So how things typically work on set or on location is um, a digital imaging technician or DIT will receive the first camera card from the, sh from the day shoot, uh, will load that into his DIT station and with DryLab can marry low res proxies um, with metadata, so any descriptive metadata, um, information that's come off the camera card, information from props, lighting, uh, technicians, um, you know, scene information, that's all married into the low res proxy that gets airdropped, I'm going to call that a very similar like airdrop functionality, uh, onto iOS devices, so like an iPad. And that means the production team can review the dailies on set without having internet connectivity, which is hugely both beneficial for checking things like continuity. Have we got the scene right? Do we need to reshoot something before you move away from that said location or from that studio? So typically people find out about this in post. And then it's expensive to fix. For usually every day on set, you spend two days in post. So yeah, the more time you can save on set, you're saving time and money in post. So you obviously have a very well-practiced pitch for this product, and I can see the uh, potential benefits of it. Mm -hmm. Having said that, it is a product which doesn't really properly exist at the moment, or at least it didn't before you guys came along. So yep. that's a challenge for you, isn't it? Because you've got to sell a relatively new concept into quite an old industry. Yeah, I mean that's a, that's an interesting comment. I think um, you know I think there's a few there's a few solutions out there that are um, that have some function uh, that that is similar to ours, but I would say most of them start in post production. We firmly, and that's what we stress that we're an onset daily distribution tool, no internet connectivity, and we marry uh, metadata to lowest proxies. The other main main difference is we are a database. Uh, some of the other solutions are folder structures, um, meaning that you know, you've got a naming convention uh, on set that may not be familiar to someone in post-production. Um, in our platform, the tags are descriptive, so that becomes the metadata. Uh, when you receive a low-res proxy, you can just click on the button tags, brings up all the tags like VFX, circle takes, uh, and if you click on those, it will bring up the footage that you're looking for. Um, and I think for filmmakers, People in post-production, that's a lot more intuitive rather than what I consider the equivalent of searching to someone else's inbox that you're not familiar with. So what's the strategy for selling? Do you just have to go around telling people all this stuff all the time? Yeah, we're going to a lot of, uh, a lot of industry events. So we go to film festivals. Uh, we obviously go and uh, see our friends at the studios, uh, production companies. But we're also doing a lot of work with individuals. So the actual people who make the content, like on set. So we work with digital imaging technicians who really seem to like it uh, because you know for them uh, they get to start that post-production function so for them also uh, rather than sitting there the whole day during the shoot getting a camera card and then starting to do the work at the end of the day people tend to want dailies the next day that's not always realistic if you're working with six seven camera cards a day that then need to be uploaded when you get back to your hotel here they can start working on those on set. So as soon as the first camera card's done, they can start working. Meaning that usually by the end of the day, they just have the last one to go. Meaning they also get some rest before they're back on set the next day. 
Yeah. That's a big benefit. Yeah. And um, we're going to zoom out slightly now, Glenn. Sure. Obviously, people know that there's been strikes and things, problems over in the US. Yep. There's also been a lot of, well, basically the media has been in the news a lot for various reasons. It's yep. a disrupted time. Is this an opportunity for you guys, do you think? Yeah, I think so. I think, you know, whenever there's a, someone said this at an event the other day, and I thought I'd, I'd borrow it. After a really big storm, um, you can find treasure on the beach. And um, I think that's what 2023 ha has brought. So it's brought uh, a, a writer strike, an actor strike, um, you know, in, in Hollywood. And obviously they're a really big content creator. Hasn't affected every industry in the world, but uh, Hollywood's obviously one of the large content creators. Um, luckily, the writer strikes are now resolved. But I think as, um, as productions have been building up, all of these productions will now be looking at how can we drive the best efficiency in order to create our content as quickly and as reliably as possible. And you know, if we can make time and money savings there, which is where we would come in, um, I think they would be very interested in that. And conversations that we've been having at people with uh, you know, cinematographers, producers, production companies at these film festivals and industry events, um, you know, the response has been overwhelming for us, which is which is great news. But you know, we are newer to the industry, uh, not, not newer um, in, let's say, Sweden and, and Norway. That's where the technology really originates from. There we have probably 80, 90% adoption in the market, but that's something that we're looking to emulate into the rest of the, the markets. It must be a very difficult product to price in a fixed way, right? Because pretty much everybody that you're going to be talking to is going to be of a different scale, aren't they? So do you have quite a lot of latitude there? Yeah, I mean, there's a, there are certain vendors that have contracts in place already with the studios, um, you know, so we're newer to the space, uh, but we're extremely flexible in how we work. So we either price on, um, on a feature film, uh, we price on uh, an episodic, so producing a TV series or for a documentary. Um, but we've also been offering incentives to uh, filmmakers to, you know, to get adoption. And the great news for us is even if we've incentivized on the first one, People aren't so enthusiastic that they want to use it on the second one, and you know we're we're getting our name out on the market. Absolutely, I do just have one final question for you. Sure. You are obviously the one, in a sense, you you are the uh, the tip of the spear for this mm -hmm. product out there in the world. Hearing from people, you know, they're going to tell you if there's something about it that they don't like, or if there's something that they like they want more of. Yeah. So, are you in a position to sort of be feeding back into the business and help iterate the product? Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously not me specifically, uh, but yes, you know, we get uh, in the sense of, you know, what I advise, obviously that doesn't go in, but what we hear from the market, absolutely. So we have cinematographers, uh, DITs and uh, producers who are, you know, they're used to working on set and they've got their workflows that they're used to. If they then marry that into how they work with Dry Lab now, they give us tips and tricks of, they said like, look, we would really love to see this feature. Um, and you know, and, and we keep learning. I mean, we're doing a, uh, a joint uh, Korean and uh, Japanese production at the moment. Um, and what's really unique is that, you know, uh, I show this to a cinematographer uh, who's not Japanese or Korean, um, or not versed in Japanese, Korean like me. Uh, and I said, look, have a look at these tags. And he said, wow, it's really impressive, but I have no idea what it means. And I said, but you can see that it's got VFX and circle in, in there. So I said, why don't you click on those? 18,000 files dumbs down to 500, uh, those are bubbled up and instantly this person, even not understanding Japanese and Korean, can see this is the content that's going to post-production. And I think for filmmakers, that is very powerful. Absolutely, yeah. I know I did say that was the final question, but I'm going to try and sneak another one if you don't mind. Sure. Me, if you've got a second. Um, what do you think will be the next big piece of news that we hear from your side of the business? So, I mean, uh, you know, since the acquisition, uh, we've been focusing on production company studios, the individuals, but also expanding our, um, our partner network. So um, we've taken it outside of uh, Sweden and Norway, which are really good markets for us. And we've signed up 16 distribution agreements. Um, there's many in the pipeline for 2024. Uh, we're coming out with a new version of Creator, um, which is uh, part, of, uh, part of Dry Lab. Uh, that's coming at the end of this year. Um, there's a whole product roadmap to roll out over the next, uh, you know, next two years or so. so uh, expect a lot of interesting announcements uh, from us um, towards the end of this year and, and in Q1, 2024. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed for your time today, Glenn. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Thomas. Thanks for having me.